How's it going guys? It's Kyle or the howto guy 123 here and Adobe recently released Generative Fill AI within Photoshop as part of their Firefly AI project. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to get it by installing the latest beta version of Photoshop and we'll be doing some experimenting with it. So let's begin by installing the latest beta version of Photoshop which includes Generative AI. So go ahead and open up Adobe Creative Cloud. And then once Creative Cloud is open, it's a good idea to make sure that you're running the latest version of Creative Cloud. So to update Creative Cloud, click on the button with the three lines here, go down to help and click check for updates. And once Creative Cloud is up to date, click on apps in the top left hand corner here, then go down to beta apps. And here you can see we can install the latest beta version of Photoshop. So just go ahead and click on install. And it's going to take a few minutes to install the beta version of Photoshop here. And once the install for the beta version of Photoshop has finished, it might need to install a few more components. So I'm just going to let it do its thing before I open up Photoshop. So now we've completed the install for Photoshop beta. It's up to date and we can go ahead and open it. And just a side note here, since we are running the beta version of Photoshop, we may run into issues and things might not work perfectly as they should. So just keep that in mind. And now we are ready to open up some images and test out generative AI. In this video, I'll show you a few different examples of what we can do with Photoshop's new generative AI. So for our first example here, I have this picture that I took with my phone of this river here. But there's this big bridge here that's under construction here and is covered in this orange fencing and it's just a huge eyesore in this picture. So we're going to use generative AI to remove the bridge here. So the first thing I'm going to do is unlock the background. And now I'm going to make a selection around the bridge. So I like to use the magnetic lasso tool and I'm just going to zoom in here and run my mouse around the bridge here. And the magnetic glass tool is just going to kind of automatically place some points here and make a selection. The selection doesn't need to be perfect. You just really want to make sure that everything you want to remove here is just within the selection. And sometimes I like to go a little bit outside of the bridge as I find the AI will blend in a little bit better. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm just going to zoom in here. I'm going to use the lasso tool just to add to the selection. Just add whatever orange is missed in the selection here. All right, I think I missed a little bit here. A little bit here. A little bit here as well. Um, otherwise... Let's expand that a little bit. Otherwise, that looks pretty good. So now that we have our bridge selected here, you can see this window down here has appeared and there's a button that says Generative Fill. So go ahead and click on it. And if it's your first time using Generative Fill, you're going to need to agree to some user guidelines. And I actually recommend checking out the user guidelines here as it pretty much tells you what you can't do with the AI. And I found it actually pretty interesting. So check out the user guidelines if you want to. But uh, once you agree to the user guidelines, you'll get a text box here and you're going to want to type in whatever you want the AI to do. So I want to remove the bridge here. So I'm going to type in remove bridge. And now click on generate and the AI will attempt to remove the bridge. And after a few seconds, your generative layer is going to appear and you can see that the generative AI does a very good job of removing the bridge. You can't even tell that there was ever a bridge there. We zoom in, can't really see any remnants of the bridge at all. Especially from a distance, it looks pretty good. The AI actually generates three different variations that you can choose from. So if you look on the right side of your screen here, just above the layers panel, you can see some variations. So there's three different variations that the AI has generated. So let's take a look at the second one. 
Let me zoom in. This one also looks pretty good. Let's look at the third variation. I think they all look pretty good. I think I like the... Yeah, I don't have any problems with really any of them. I think I like the first one a little bit better. They're all pretty good. And the AI will put whatever is removed or whatever it generates on a separate layer. So you can see generative layer one here on the layers panel. And if we hide the layer here, we can hide whatever the AI has removed. So it's just going to bring our image back to the original image. So this is essentially the before picture. And here is the after picture. And because it's its own layer, you can make whatever adjustments you want to layer here. So you can change the opacity if you want. You can have a little ghost bridge here. You can add layer styles. You can add uh, layer adjustments, pretty much anything you want to do to the layer you can do. For the second example here, we're going to fix a picture from last year's vacation. Uh, the first thing I want to do is remove all these people here that ruined the photo. So I'm going to use my lasso tool and I'm just going to circle around all of the people I want to remove. I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard to add to the selection. And now that all of the people have been selected, let's click generative fill and let's tell the AI to remove people. Now let's click generate. And there we go. All the people have been removed. Let's take a look at our different variations. Uh, once again, they're all good. I don't like this one as the staircase just kind of gets flattened here. Yeah, I like the second one. The staircase gets ruined here as well. It gets kind of slopey. I think the second one here is good. Uh, once again, the staircase does get kind of messed up here, but it only really looks bad if you zoom into it. From a distance, it looks fine. And you really can't see any remnants of the people. Everything else kind of looks pretty proper. Now let's try adding things to the picture with generative AI. So the first thing I want to do is try adding some clouds in the clear blue sky here. So I'm just going to use my lasso tool and make some circles in the sky here. Uh, let's click generative fill. Let's type in add clouds. Generate and let's see what happens. I might need to make a better selection, but let's just see what, what happens here. All right, it generated our clouds. That looks pretty good. Uh, I like the second one. It makes the clouds look pretty poofy. Um, I'm actually gonna, going to hide this layer. I'm going to try that selection one more time. I think what I'm going to do is make a selection on this side of the sky, on the left side of the, the lighthouse. We'll just tell it add clouds, generate, Yeah, it looks a little bit better. Um, I think I like this one. I like how the cloud kind of extends closer to the lighthouse. Uh, then I'm going to make a, another selection. This time with the lasso tool. Uh, I think that's too big. Make a smaller selection here. And we're going to add a flock of birds. I'll click generate and let's see what happens. Mm, that's too circular. Uh, that one's pretty good. Um, I'm going to try making a smaller selection. Uh, one other thing we can do before I actually add the flock of birds is I want to try turning down the opacity of the clouds a little bit. Just turn it down a little bit. That might look a little bit better. And uh, then I'm just going to make a, a smaller selection with my lasso tool. Generate to fill and let's try adding the flock of birds again. I don't like how it's adding it in a ring. Let's try a less circular selection. Okay, that's much better. Uh, let's try variation 2. Variation 3. I think variation 1 is pretty good. I kind of wish there were a few more birds, but other than that, I think that looks okay. Try moving them over a little bit. 
turning down the opacity. Is that doing anything? Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, if I move it closer to the lighthouse. Yeah, I like that a lot. That looks pretty good. So the last thing I want to do with this image is try generating a person back. I'm going to create a small selection in front of the lighthouse with the elasto tool. Click generative fill. Let's type in add person. Now let's click generate. And yeah, you can see it added a little man there. Uh, you can see if you really zoom in there, uh, the person looks very AI generated. Uh, I find the AI here doesn't do people very well. Uh, I find most AIs don't really do people very well. Uh, but if you zoom out there, it doesn't look too bad. So another thing you can do with generative AI is actually expand a picture. So I have a picture of a desert here and I want to expand the shot here. So there's more of the desert in the shot. So I'm going to unlock the background and take the crop tool and expand the canvas on the left and right side a little bit. And now I'm going to make a selection with the rectangular marquee tool. So we'll just select the left side and the right side. Click generate to fill and we'll just type in expand desert. I'm not sure how um, descriptive you have to be. I'll just click generate and we'll see what happens. And there we go. And you can see that the image has been expanded. It actually looks really good. Uh, if you zoom in here, you might be able to see where the AI cuts off, but uh, not really actually. I think on larger images, you can definitely see where the AI cuts off. You can see a little bit if you really zoom in here. I think it looks excellent. Uh, let's check out the different variations. Yeah, they're all really good. Uh, I kind of like that one. This one adds another little mountain here uh, on the left side. The AI does a really good job of expanding the image. And for our last example, I have this picture of this woman and we're going to use generative AI to change the background and this woman's location. So the current latest version of Photoshop actually introduced this cool feature. Uh, at the bottom here, you can see a window with a button that says select subject. Uh, and Photoshop's actually able to detect the person or subject uh, in your photo and automatically make a selection around it. So you can see it did a pretty good job of automatically detecting the woman and making a selection around her. So now we're going to want to get the inverse of the selection here to change the background. And on the generative fill bar here, or window, there's this button here with the two arrows, and this will uh, inverse your selection. So now let's click generative fill, and let's put this woman at the beach. So change background to beach. Click generate, and let's see what the AI can do. And that's pretty good. You can see uh, the AI has generated this woman in front of the ocean. Uh, it's a little bit of uh, messiness down by your legs. Try different variations. It's, uh, it's a little bit better. The AI generated this beach completely from scratch. You can see how uh, high quality the water is, how nice the sand is, how clear the water is. Uh, let's try the last one. I like the, the second one. It is It does kind of look like AI art, let's be honest here. Uh, and I do find AI kind of messed with the woman's body here and her face is all kind of funky. Um, yeah. So this part could be a, uh, a little bit better, but it doesn't look too bad. Uh, and obviously you can uh, use other tools in Photoshop to uh, make the picture look a little bit better, but from a distance, it looks pretty decent. And that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed playing around with Photoshop's new generative fill AI today. It works pretty well and since it's only in its beta stage, it's only going to get better as time goes on and as AI technology improves. 
Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video.